They say some speak to. All right, good afternoon one more time. I chose this moment right after lunch because I knew everybody want, want to sleep. And that would be a good idea because it's easy to talk to people who are sleeping. Yeah, Dr. Ned Roberto chose not to speak. So if you fall asleep, um, remember to wake up after 40 minutes. And you can ask your partner to pay by you while you're sleeping. So you have a good nap. All right, uh, so my name is Raju Mandian, and I have friends here, and some lovers too. Yeah. Uh, why storytelling for a leader? And I went through that question in my mind. Then somebody in the bathroom met me, and he said, why storytelling? Then I told that person in the bathroom, I think it was Quint, and he said, because the Prince of Peace was a storyteller. Because the good book is all about stories. So why not a leader be a storyteller? But before I go into my little 30 minute talk, I'd like to share something. What I'm gonna do in this next 30 minutes, tell you maybe two or three stories, and tell you how to tell stories in the second story, okay? And if I use my time well, if I manage my time well, if you're left with five or 10 minutes, you write your own stories. And if you have time, we'll hear those stories. If you don't have time, I'll be around. You tell me your stories, and I'll give you a gift. Is that good? So that's the strategy. I do speak Tagalog. At least I understand part of it. So about eight years ago, I was in India, and somebody invited me to give, me, give a talk on leadership. This was a call center training institute, and they just called me, and they said, can you come and talk about leadership? So they were about two dozen trainers in that room and in India also they do the same thing. Uh, call center training as accent training, customer service, etc., etc. So I had no prepared talk. So I just went up and I said, you know what guys, why don't you ask me a question and I'll answer it. So they went through question number one, two, three, four. One of them says, Ranchu, uh, sir, because I look like Sir. JV mentioned that this morning. I look like a Sir, so gray hair. He said, uh, Sir, what's a perfect leader? Now, prior to that, I'd gone through a lot of leadership training. We talked about leadership skills, leadership styles, leadership competencies, but nobody ever told me what's a perfect leader. And then, uh, actually, that was my internal reaction that there's none. But I didn't want to call that guy a dummy because he was my kababayan. So I kept quiet for a while. And in my head, the images of leaders that I have respected over time, they went through, they flashed to my head. Gandhi, good leader, powerful leader, very inspirational, very visionary, but somebody shot him. Deva? So that means he wasn't good enough for everyone. Therefore, he was not perfect. Yeah, somebody still found flaw with him. Lincoln, great leader, civil rights leader, changed the history of the world. Somebody still shot him. Here at home in the Philippines, 1983, August 21, somebody still shot a leader. Did he not? So there was somebody who was not happy with the leader's leadership styles. So there are millions of styles. In fact, to look at leadership is to look at an at elephant like those six blind people looked at an elephant. You know that story? How many people don't know that story? Quint, you don't know that story? Oh, okay, I'll tell it to you later. So people who know this, it's, uh, leadership is a concept. It's no hard, it's not a geometrical thing. So six blind men go around the elephant, and each of them touch the elephant. Each of them has a different opinion. The guy who catches the trunk says the elephant is like a hose like a fire hose. The guy who touches his leg says the elephant is like a tree trunk. Then the guy who touches the side of the elephant says the elephant's like a wall. The guy who grabs a tail says the elephant's like a rope. And the guy who touches the tusks of the elephant says the elephant is like the Taj Mahal. That's not true, I made that one up. <laughs> so, uh, so there's no perfect leader. There are competencies, there are styles, but the leadership tools are simple, they're easy. They, they are simple, they can be understood, they are not a concept. Questioning, listening, empathy, compassion, 
And most of all, storytelling is a leadership tool. So that's why a leader is a story. Is that good for you? Okay, so uh, at the end of this 30 minutes, I hope you go home and be able to tell stories in your trainings, in your business meetings, in your coaching sessions, in your mentoring sessions, in your performance feedback. You'll be able to tell stories and inspire people. Okay? So story number one. Starts with once upon a time. <laughs> once upon a time, long, long ago, in a land far, far away, there lived, you like it, princess? No princess here. <laughs> once upon a time, in a land far, far away, a long, long time ago, there lived two beautiful women. Really beautiful. Their beauty was legendary. People, the whole country of Israel where they lived, looked up to these two beauties. And they said, wow, how pretty, how beautiful, how wonderful, how charming these two ladies are. But as it happens to most celebrities and most good-looking people, or people who depend on their looks, these two beauties got insecure about their beauty. They become unsure, you know, as we age. So one said to another, she said, why don't we go out onto the high street of Israel, Jerusalem, and test our beauty, see if there's still a market for it, yeah? So the other one said, why not? Let's do it today. So both of them stepped out of their houses, went to high streets of Jerusalem. So the first one, who was a little bold, pun intended, she said, me first. So she stepped out on the high street of Jerusalem and she walked as beauty walk. The frustrating thing is nobody Nobody looked at her. She, she was hurt. She said, that's impossible. I'm beautiful. Remember, I'm the legendary beauty of Jerusalem. What do I do? So she came back, and she got a bit more bolder. That's grammatically wrong. But you know what I mean. Yeah? She got a bit more bolder, and she walked out onto the high streets, clicking her, heel, clicking, clicking her heels. And as she crossed the street... This time, let me get a glass of water. This time, people turned their faces away in disgust at her boldness. Oh my God, she said, that's impossible. People used to like this. People used to love me. So she came back and she said, this time I'm going to be my boldest. The men in, their, in this room can let their imagination run, run free. So at her boldest, she walked out onto the streets of Jerusalem. The people of Jerusalem, the rabbis, the business people, the shoemaker, the cobbler, etc., they ran into their homes. They shut the windows and the doors to this lady's beauty. She was devastated. And she came back and she said, God, I'm never, ever going to expose myself again. Never, ever is also grammatically wrong. So, but you get the message. The second one said, Minaman. They spoke Tagalog, of course. <laughs> they said, Minaman, ahumuna, ahumuna, ahumuna. So this time, the second one, she put on her technical raincoat. She put a few feathers and flowers in her hair, and she put jingle bells in her anklets, and she walked out onto the streets of Jerusalem. And people on the street, they came out of their houses, and they said, wow, ganda naman, beautiful, wow, wow, fantastic. They applauded her. They sang songs for her. And she was swinging her purse and swinging herself, talking to the kids, kidding with the rabbis over here. Not here. In, in Jerusalem. They're kidding with the rabbis. And that was it. Two beauties. One gets applauded, the other one doesn't. My question to you, what could be the difference between these two beauties? They were both beautiful. Oh, well, could you try and guess their names? Okay, give up. Give up, no long. The first one was called Truth. And the second beauty was called Story. 
I'll repeat that one more time. The first beauty who became bold, bolder, and boldest, her name was Truth. And the second one who covered herself in a raincoat, technical raincoat, put a flower and jingle bells in her shoes, she was called Story. That's the power of story. When you wrap truth around into a story, people buy it, people applaud it. But the moment you become bolder or boldest with your truth, people run away from it. Does that make sense? So anytime you want to tell the truth, put on a technical raincoat to that, put some flowers on it, and people will absorb it, buy it. It's all about presentation. Whether it's a one-on-one -on -one presentation, one-on-many, or a presentation like that, it's all about how you package what you want to do. Does that make sense? So, if you like that, say yeah. yeah. Okay, do you want the story number three now? Two. No, the first one was about me and uh, this perfect leader guy. <laughs> See, you were so involved. Okay, I'll give you three, it doesn't matter. Now, the way to tell stories. So that's truth behind story. Those are stories. Oh, so what do stories do? Stories activate the whole brain. What does that mean? That means most all of us are left brain dominated. We've been trained like that all our lives to remember numbers, to remember alphabets, to remember poetry, to remember how a system works. Our right brain is usually at peace, it doesn't do anything. But when you tell a story, that right brain, left brain goes to sleep and the right brain wakes up and your whole brain works together. It's easy to understand stories. Does that make sense? Step number one, activates the whole brain. Seeps through cerebral defense, logical. When you tell something logical to people, they want to analyze it. They, they want to think about that. Let me see that. Step number one, step number two, this is it. Those are hard-edged information. People don't buy that easily. Yeah? But when you tell a story, people relax. They say, oh, sige, kwento lang naman yan. Right? Then they listen to you and they participate. Hmm? Kwento han. Invoke creativity and inclusiveness. So when I was sharing the story of my experiences in leadership training, did your personal thoughts come up about your own training, about your own exposure to leadership? Did that happen, yes or no? So that's inclusiveness. People talk about the speaker was not participative. He did not interact. Tell a story, even though you're sitting down and not moving around playing Sao Sao Suka, you are still interacting with me. Because your personal stories are surfacing from the depths of your unconscious. And that's what happens when you tell somebody a story. So it invokes creativity and inclusiveness. Catalyzes rapport and action. So when I told you my story, you know the kind of a person I am. It gives you a glimpse into who I am. So when you interview a person and you tell, tell that person, hey, tell me about your life. So the moment that person shares his life story, you get a silip sa buhay niya. You get a silip sa character niya. Does that make sense? Is my Tagalog good? Okay. So you get a silip of the person behind the front. That's the one. So catalyzes rapport and action. Stories are about hope and inspiration. Your lives are about hope and inspiration. Yeah? In your lifetime, if you have values, if you have belief systems, if you have simple truths that you follow, they have all been inspired by stories of your childhood, about the sights, the sounds, and the smells of your childhood, the moment you went to church with your family, or when your mom sat you down and talked about a complex, about a concept, a complex concept called discipline. Yeah? You learned that from mom. Or maybe about teamwork through your dad. Yeah, that makes sense. So it kind of catalyzes rapport and action. You want to do things after you hear a story. Anchor into our emotions for life. Through the defenses of our conscious brain, through the defenses of our left brain, deep inside is our, what is known as the beastly brain, the heart of our mind. Physiologically, it's represented by amygdala. That's where your most powerful emotions are. Stories go right in, down there, and settle down. So you tell somebody a cuento about your personal experiences, about your sharing, about your personal pain, it goes and settles down inside. Does that make sense? 
So five reasons, five good reasons to share stories. By the way, if you look at your handout, these things are there. All you have to do is fill in the blanks. May I get some water? Now, how do we tell stories? Number one, since stories come from the depths of our souls, what you need to do is start with a simple truth you believe in. You believe in honesty. You believe in integrity. You believe in compassion. You believe in mercy. Yeah? Pick a simple truth that you strongly believe in. Around that, there must be a story in your life. If you don't have it, pick another one which represents and looks alike. Now, my simple truth is what we saw during lunchtime, what Sandy Prieto was saying about asking questions. My simple truth is I believe in the power of questions. I believe in the power of inquiry rather than telling, complaining, or assuming. I ask people what they want, what their hopes are. That's my belief, that questions are much more powerful than assumptions. Questions are much more powerful than commands. That's my belief. So let's see what I'm going to do now with you. I'll create a story that will highlight this truth. Game Kayo? Okay. Choose a small incident of your personal experience. So here's a small incident from my life. <coughs> About five years ago, I had to babysit my 11-year-old daughter. She's now 17. Six years ago, do the math right, Mumbai. <laughs> so six years ago, I had to babysit my little daughter, and she brought her friends along. But that day, I also had to, I used to live in Parin, okay? I had to drive up to Phelan Towers, go up on the 21st floor, pick up a set of documents. So I put my kids, my daughter and her friends, in a rev where I was driving those days, and I wore a barong and I said, hey, I'll go do two tasks at one time. Look after the kids, spend quality time with the kids, and pick up the documents. So I drove from Paranyaki to Salcedo Village. And as is usual, when you come back, come behind Philam Towers in Salcedo Village, there was no parking. Yeah? Happens to you? Yeah? yeah? So choose a small incident of your personal experience. <clears throat> so when I got there, step number two, pala, huh? Paint a scenery similar enough to current reality. So when I got there, no parking. What do I do? I have three kids in the back. I'm wearing a barong. I have to run up to Philam Towers. What's my best option? I did the thing. I, I did the next best stupid thing a dad would do. I left the car, uh, kids in the car. I rolled down the windows a bit, put the air cones on full blast, left the engine running, told the kids, don't get out, no matter what. Don't get into the front of the seat. Don't touch the gears, the keys, etc. Stay in the back. I'll be back in five minutes. Yeah? I left the blinkers on. I said, even if somebody hauls the car away, just stay inside. Ahum bahala. Yeah? Next best stupid thing. So after that, in the heat of the day, now uh, I'm a little slim now. Do I look slim? No, no, man. So uh, I was a little heavier about six years ago in a barong, and so I ran from where I parked the car, and as I was running, what were the two things on my mind, Agnes? What were my two tasks to accomplish? Pick up the documents, come back to the kids, right? Those were the two things. Nothing else. I was shut off to everything else, correct? So I ran. So as I, as I was running, even though I had two things on my mind, of course, you know, I still had a whole brain, remember? So I was looking at the people and the security guards and the x-ray machine. And I ran through the lobby of Philam Towers. And as I was running, I saw things. I saw things. And then there was an elevator. And I was about to lunge into the elevator when something like a sledgehammer hit my chest. Bang. Is that okay? Bang. It was like a toro. It was probably a bull, uh, what do you call that, tamara or something. I went, oh! Now, usually when something like this happens to you, right, suddenly, what's your first animalistic reaction? Yeah? Even though I was dying, it was like that 
shot in Rocky when Sylvester Stallone gets hit. Remember, he goes, Ugh. So somebody hit me like that. <coughs> I turned around and I go, what the? You could pick any of the 26 letters of alphabet. You could, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I go, what the H? Yeah. I go, what the H? And remember, I'm like Gandhi in a barong. A little overweight Gandhi in a barong. And I go, what the H with my Indian accent? I go, what the H? And I turn around. That's my reaction. But what's my intention behind that reaction? Guess that. Do I want to kill the guy or whatever hit me? Or do I want an apology? Apology. Thank you very much. So I turn around. And of course, as I turn around, my brain's still working. My eyes are working. My lips tighten up. My jaws tighten up. My fist becomes tight. I say, what the? Ladies and gentlemen, you got to guess what I saw. As I turned around, my life and death appeared right in front of me. The guy who had hit me was about three times my size. Yeah, three times. He was like King Kong in tight jeans, <laughs> tight black jeans. He had a black skivvy. He had muscles here the size of my two Bombay legs put together. And he had a punky hairstyle, and he had a belt that was six inches wide, and he had skulls and bones on that thing, and he had a stud here and a stud there. So I'm turn, turning around, and all I need is an apology, and what's the two things on my mind? Get the documents, go back to the kids, and I go, what the? Pick any of those letters of your choice from the alphabet. I go, what the? And I see this. And suddenly, the world stops. The security guard who was frisking people, he stopped, he pulled out his gun. Yeah, uh, the receptionist who was picking up IDs, she paused and she she had a uh, shotgun in the back, like in a showdown, right? Remember the West? She pulled that one out. All the pedestrians, they stopped. My kids in the car, in my head, in my mind, they too stopped. They went like home alone. <gasps> so as I turned around, so I saw this guy go. <gasps> that wasn't it. He says, "What's the problem, sir?" It's a good thing you told me I was a sir. It's a good thing you said I wasn't Rajesh. What's the problem, sir? The story didn't end there. The struggle, the suspense didn't end there. Two more guys, just like him, fanned out from behind him and stood by his side. There you go. Now, I had to make a decision. It was a life and choice decision. Yeah? Leadership is also about decision making in crisis. Is it not? Yeah? And I had like about half a second maybe one-fifth of a second. And I saw everything frozen. In my mind, I think even GMA went into a freeze frame, like Matrix, in Malakanyang. She was about to sign a law, and she said, wait, me problema. So, uh, Philan Towers, show down at Philan Towers, you know. Show down at high noon. There's a Bombay who's going to become biryani very soon. <laughs> so I stopped. Well, my leadership training, my simple truth surfaced from the depths of my soul. I pause for a minute. I unclench my fist. I loosen my double chin. And I said, you got to think about this. man. <laughs> this is a crisis moment. And I said this. Bam, 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 bam. Whatever I said was in a question format. But I got my apology right after. The statement I made, ladies and gentlemen, was this. If I bumped into you, then I am sorry. I'll repeat that. If I bumped into you, then I am sorry. It was a question, a conditional question. Now, my, what's my simple truth? I believe in questions. So after I asked that question, in that flash of a second, this King Kong in tight jeans and his two sidekicks, Shaquille O'Neal and Magic Johnson, they paused, hang on. His brain circuits, I could see them, like you see it in MRI or ECG. They went left, right brain, you know, all those blue, green colors. And he looked at me, and after what's the problem, he saw me go like that. He too went like that. Now, when you ask a question, suddenly the power that you hold, the ball that you hold in your court is in your client's court. Now, he has to be the leader. Am I not right? He has to make the decision that should he cook biryani right now or should he just go away peacefully? Yeah? And so he paused. He saw me change and he realized 
that he too hadn't seen me. Just like I hadn't seen him, he hadn't seen me too. His response was, Sir, it was I who bumped into you, and I'm sorry. End of story. The security guard went back to frisking people. The pedestrians started to move. The girl put the shotgun back. My kids went back to playing. And GMA signed that law that you had to sign. Bumba is free. So, <laughs> this is a true story. I'm not making it up. I swear to you. This is a true story. It's just that I wrote it for you to enjoy it. Step number six in storytelling, or step number five, sorry, is all your stories must end happily ever after, like the princess and the peace story. They must. Otherwise, they don't inspire. They don't serve a purpose. Okay, have you ever told somebody a sad story to inspire him? It doesn't work, right? Have you told the story of somebody who died? You go to a funeral and talk about death. Like how somebody said, no, you talk about little things, right? So every time your story must end in happily ever after. You're sitting down your client. You're sitting down your colleague in front of you. You're coaching or mentoring him. If you're doing a three or a five minute story, it must somehow create positive, constructive, hopeful change inside his dip dip. Is that right? Dip dip, yeah? Yeah, okay. That. Puso, 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 sorry. Sorry, my Tagalog needs improvement. So your stories must and in success, at the end of storytelling, if the simple truth was highlighted well enough, your people will get it. Otherwise, you just mention it in a few words. Always bring back to the original truth. That's how you tell stories. Does that make sense? Kaya natin yan. Okay, I have no idea how much time I've left. 15 more minutes to go? All right, so let the truth be transferred. Actually, I'm done the way it goes, you know? but I'm not going to ask you to get up yet, stay. So let the truth be transferred. Uh, a little science behind storytelling. This little learning that I have comes from a guy called Brian Sturm. He's a professor at North Carolina and he talks about storytelling. And he says, you know, what happens during storytelling? Story storytelling is this, Raju. There are people sitting in front of you, yeah? They have their own bunch of thoughts. They have their own bunch of thoughts. You come from your own perspectives, your own mindsets, your own background, your own education, your own set of values. And here I am, the storyteller or the leader, and I'm telling a story. So I create a thought bubble, correct? And the thought bubble has no dimensions. It's like cotton candy. It's a big cotton candy that's expanding. While I do this, since it has no shape, you guys are looking to fit into that thought bubble as you listen to me. Because you're looking to fit into that thought bubble, your personal thought bubbles arise. So little cotton candy balls are coming out from you as I speak. Eventually, during the middle of the story, you become part of a big cloud around us. So when I was telling you that story about King Kong and Shaquille O'Neal, your personal stories came up. Of course, you don't have the same experience, but your feelings rise and you attach and you become one. It becomes teamwork. Are you with me? So you're not telling people, you're not talking down to people, you're not commanding, you're not delegating, you're just sharing. So that's it. Now, uh, just to highlight what I've just said, I want to share some of the stories that all Filipinos, me too, including myself, because I've been here for 30 years, so I know how it feels to be a Filipino. So one of the stories that inspired me and still inspires me today as a quasi-Filipino, quasi-Filipino is a good word, <laughs> half Filipino from here up, is the story of a little girl who back in 1984, I saw her sing and she said, the sun will come out tomorrow. You know that little girl? She represents discipline and dedication to a craft. Just listening to any of her stories, it inspires discipline and dedication in us. That's one story that is part of your life and also part of my life. That's her. Is that right? See, it churns up emotions inside you. People who were around in 1984, not the ones who were born post-1984. Another story. Bunch of women in uniform, 
gray uniform on Edsa, 1986, facing tanks and armies. Does that story inspire you? Yeah? You can tell that story again and again if you want to talk about courage in the face of fear. Yeah? That's a great example. There we are. 1986. I wasn't here. I'd flown to Panama just for that week. I missed the action. I was here before and after, but that particular week of February, I was gone. One more story which constantly inspires me today. I mean, I live up to be like this person who still lives and walks this beautiful land of the Philippines. He wears sandals and he goes around the world building homes for the poor and the homeless. Isn't he a great story? Yeah? You all know him? Tony Meloto, Gawat Kalinga. And last but not the least, something amazing has happened in this country just a couple of weeks ago. There was a sad incident that occurred on Luneta. But post that, the person in charge, just last week, the leader that we are all looking up to, he said, I take full responsibility for what happened in Luneta. Never mind the case, never mind the story. I don't have any opinion about that. But I have an opinion about what the president said. He says, the buck stops with me. I love that. Yeah? So in conclusion, I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the sun has come out today in the Philippines. Pun intended. Mabuhay. Thank you so much, Mr. Raju. Fantastic. Boy, now I, I feel like I want to change my presentation later and put a lot of stories there. Uh, yes, please text your question or if you're not afraid to die, raise